Today we have uh, Deepti Nair from Your Story. And to introduce her, we have Sairam, who is the Chennai representative of Footprint uh, Global Communication, who have been our partners with IIT Madras, with Incubation Cell, um, you know, covering the stories of our startups. And we've seen the kind of impact that has had in the media. And uh, while I leave the formal introduction and the further session to Sairam and my colleagues, um, I just wanted to really thank Deepti for taking the time to speak to our startups. I'm sure there is not a single one of you who's not heard about your story, right? Um, and what a journey they've had. I mean, a startup themselves um, in from 2008, uh, they've kind of carved out such a fantastic niche for themselves. And all of us, if we want to know anything about the startup ecosystem, any story to do with startups, that's kind of our go-to source, right? Uh, so it's, it's been amazing to see that story and the kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, trust and respect that your story has developed has been wonderful to watch. And so uh, thank you so much, Deepti, for taking the time to, you know, to be here with us and to kind of offer your insights on, uh, you know, how media approaches startups and how startups should be approaching uh, media. And Saidam, once again, thank you to you and Bhavani for making the connect and, you know, for uh, enabling this for us. Welcome. Um, yeah. And uh, I just to, you know, uh, inform all our startups, Deepti has been kind enough to, uh, you know, promise a workshop on this very aspect. So uh, since it's just putting it out there so that, you know, there is no escape for Deepti now. It's on record and uh, we would dearly, dearly uh, love to have her kind of do a workshop for our startups. And uh, I'm sure all of you will truly benefit for that. So we will revert to you again on that, uh, Deepti, you know, on uh, some convenient dates uh, again. So thank you once again, Sairam. Thank you, Deepti, uh, your story and uh, footprint. And uh, over to you, Sairam. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Jaya. Thanks a lot for this opportunity. And uh, yeah, I'd love to do the workshop sometime. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Please sign so, up. Yeah. Yeah. So good evening, uh, friends. Um, I do believe uh, Ms. Jaya has stolen the thunder from my introduction. I think he's done all the introduction. And in any case, I don't think your story needs any introduction in audience of startups. Um, I think everybody who is in this game will probably... Uh, know more than um, me about your story. So I will confine my introduction to Ms. Deepthi, our speaker today. So Ms. Deepthi Nair is an award-winning journalist and she's had a very rich career across media. And uh, I mean, I can go on and on, on, but Ms. Deepthi requested me, I keep my introduction short. So I'll just uh, say that your story now is probably uh, the fastest emerging uh, media in the startup ecosystem and probably if not these largest and Ms. Deepthi has had wide experiences in print, television, internet, radio and now of course the digital space. So she's already um, quite, uh, I think, um, I won't take too much time so I think it's best that we directly move on to um, Ms. Deepthi. Ms. Deepthi also made a point that more of this one hour session focus on interactions so we look forward to a lot of questions from our participants so that it's a more of an inter so thank you again uh Ziti, I will over thank you thank you so much Sairam for those kind words and uh, uh and thank you everybody for joining and uh, I hope uh, I mean let's make it a two-way interaction as I had also requested I'll make a short presentation of course uh, give you a little context about media, little context about your story. And uh, then we can take it from there and you can share your questions uh, and uh, please do participate. Uh, so, and, and also please, uh, you know, I, I'll be sharing my screen and make, uh, giving a short presentation. So there'll be, might be a little fumble here and there. So please excuse for that. Uh, so, okay, I'll just share my screen and uh, we can start. Uh, is it visible? Yes, ma'am, it is visible now. Okay, hang on. And it is full screen. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, at your story, uh, I mean, Sairam did uh, talk about uh, your story, and we've been around for some time. So, 
13 years to be precise. We started out in 2009 as a very small blog in um, uh, Bombay when uh, our founder and CEO, Shraddha Sharma, uh, saw the, uh, you know, the kind of stories that were emerging when she was with uh, CNN and then subsequently with TOI. Uh, many entrepreneurs, tech entrepreneurs would come to them with their stories and she found that there was something in that to report that the mainstream media was not interested. The mainstream media, uh, I come from a mainstream media, uh, having worked uh, in, in print as Sairam did mention in my bio. So uh, nobody's interested in a, a story where you haven't yet proved yourself, uh, where uh, you haven't reached the pinnacle of glory and success. So similar was the case at that time. And there, but she found that there was uh, something more to these tech entrepreneurs who were coming and telling their stories. Uh, there were, uh, of course, then she started this blog on the site and uh, she had no clue how she's going to monetize it or what. It, it was just a matter of saying that every story matters and I need to tell these stories, right? Um, yeah, so every story matters. And uh, what is our vision? Uh, so we've been around now for 13 years and uh, it is what we believe is we are in the business of transformation through stories. Why do we tell stories? We tell stories because there are entrepreneurs like you out there who's who are trying to make a difference. And we need to make that uh, reach a wider audience. And, and hence, uh, when we say business of transformation through stories, people may read our stories, it could be investors who are reading our stories, could be your customer, potential customers who are reading your story. So hence, it, it, it uh, you know, kind of a cycle of transformation just by telling that story. Uh, we, uh, we also, uh, you know, have this, uh, it's ingrained in us, so uh, it is entrepreneur first for us always, and we, we've been creating, you know, tangible impact on entrepreneurs lives, uh, who will create the future when I say impact it is, uh, as I talked about it could be securing funding from investors, it could be you know hiring for talent, it could be uh, reaching out to your potential customers. Uh, how do we do this so I don't know. Uh, how many of you have uh, seen the, the Your Story website? If I may uh, show you the web website, hang on. You must have seen our website, right? Uh, we have the main Your Story platform, which is here. Uh, if you go to more, we have various verticals. So we write about tech startups. Definitely, we, that's what we started doing, writing about tech startups. Then we also tell stories of small and medium businesses, which are uh, not your regular tech startups, but which are, uh, you know, say, uh, traditional businesses, legacy businesses, uh, businesses that are man manufacturing and uh, family businesses. So we write about them as well. We write about her story. In her story, we uh, profile women change makers, women leaders. In social story, we uh, talk about uh, the social enterprises, the uh, impact, social impact entrepreneurs who are there uh, related to climate change, related to all the social issues we cover there. Of course, we have a whole lot of other various uh, properties. Then we have my story. So my story is something where it's a user-generated platform. You can go there and write uh, a story. Of, it could be your inspirational story. It could be a story of somebody that you know whose story you feel must be told. So it's it's on our platform. It's a user-generated platform where you can go and write your story. So uh, then we have Your Story TV, where you can go and, you, you know, during the COVID, like in 2020, when COVID struck, and when we were all sitting at home and it was lockdown time, uh, you know, we did, what we did was bring everybody uh, on to, uh, you know, have interviews like this over Zoom. 
and uh, which was, and then we would push, uh, and, and the whole idea was that how is, how are you innovating in this time? How are you trying to make the most of uh, this lockdown period? How are you carrying on with your business? So that was the whole um, idea of doing those interviews, etc. So we have a Your Story TV, you can go and explore uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, see what uh, uh, so many interviews are there and so many then we have a vertical where which is an education and learning which is why it's learn uh, where you can if you are learning I mean wanting to be an entrepreneur there are various courses available uh, uh, paid and free uh, both uh, so you can go and go and explore that so that was essentially why I shared the screen to show you that uh, yeah, and uh, we've done about, till date, uh, we've done about uh, 120,000 stories still now since we started out. Uh, we have about 10 million users who are a regular on uh, our platform who read us. And uh, we've been, uh, we were bootstrapped for a long, long time. And in 2015, uh, we raised our first round and uh, we have marquee investors on board from our in Tata, uh, Ratan Tata to UC Berkeley to Kalari Capital to Qualcomm Ventures. So yeah, uh, that's a little bit about the organization. Now, why are we here? We are here to know what media looks for, right? What is it that the media looks for when, when you pitch to a media, when you pitch to a startup? So I just go back to my uh, presentation, hang on. Okay, sorry, sorry, one sec. I just wanted to you, uh, show you one uh, story that uh, we did. So just to give you an idea of what we look for in a story, how a story should be told. We are an IIT Madras incubated startup. In fact, a couple of the founders have... And the story is from your IIT IIT. incubated startup. In fact, a couple of the founders have just graduated, including myself from college. And what we do is we build cutting edge solutions to do remote, intelligent asset monitoring in the industries. We have two products in our portfolio. Number one is a sensor, the first sensor in the world that can monitor any thickness change happening in pipelines in real time. Right now, for pipelines are above 100 degrees Celsius, no one is able to do it. We've come up with creative technology where you can monitor it in real time. And this helps the industry avoid taking shutdowns when they have leakages that result in huge productivity losses per day, close to six to nine crores. That's number one. Number two is we, while building this product, there are about five years of R&D that's gone into it. We were exposed to a lot of other problems that the industry faced. And we saw the way they inspected their large volume assets like your stacks, boilers, crude oil uh, lines. All of it was done very primitively. They take shutdowns, build scaffoldings, and then climb up and visually or thermally inspect, right? And with every shutdown, again, they lose around six to nine crores. Uh, so we've come out with the first intelligent industrial drone in India, where the product is not just the drone. Uh, it is the intelligence we built behind the drone. Uh, so we're able to bring in safety. Uh, the drone does not uh, monitor its position to, through GPS anymore. It positions itself through a uh, patented indoor positioning system, bringing the accuracy a lot higher. And number two is we have the domain expertise of the oil and gas industry. So we know exactly what they are looking for and we put that into our algorithms, computer vision algorithm. So the drone automatically assesses the complete surface and within the same day, we're able to give reports to the client on what to do with their assets without taking a shutdown at all. The industry space we work in is extremely difficult. Um, the people, the mindset, changing their mindset into bringing in new technology, especially from an Indian startup, is a startup. 
keyword is the toughest bit. So I'm 22 years old, uh, selling it to a client uh, where the boardroom is filled with people of about 50 to 60 years old. Uh, funnily, one of the things I did was grow the beer. And uh, second was sell the technology first, show our track record, and then talk about who you are, right? Um, but we realized that once we get one captive client, we got it in the world's largest refinery, that's Reliance in space. Once we converted them, it was far easier to convert the others. And during this whole process, uh, we have seen ourselves transform from students into entrepreneurs as well. Right? So that was one of the biggest changes in all of the process. We have a 40 member team and uh, out of which 20 are young IITs just building technology on different, different domains. And several of it is being patented right now. Right? So we have the resources, we have the people, and we have the drive, right? Young, the, the whole young mindset. So I see ourselves building more and more technology to create a value addition over what other people provide currently. Yeah. So this was one story that we did. I mean, if you were watching this, uh, hearing this. One second. Uh, you would uh, know that, you know, what uh, he's saying, you know, he we is trying IIT to Madras hang on. It started. I think fact, it's uh, still on. A couple of the founders have just graduated, including myself from college. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he tells, uh, the whole point is, what is he telling the media? Like, what what was he telling us? Uh, and, and why would that his story matter to anybody, uh, right? I mean, you can hear that, that it's not only about him, but the kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the solutions that he's providing for the industry that he's talking about. And what was that very unique thing? What was that thing that made his uh, story so uh, little endearing? Uh, as well, because he's a 22 year old at that time. Of course, this was a couple of years ago uh, in 2017, I think. And uh, subsequently, by the way, this in June this year in 2021, they've gone and uh, raised uh, uh, 20, uh, $12 million uh, from some investors as well. So what we do is we not only tell your story, we will also go and like follow up through uh, that. OK, this has happened. And, uh, you know, uh, now this is where an update on that particular startup. Uh, that's that, uh, that. So I just wanted to show you this so that you can, uh, you know, get get, an, uh, get a sense of uh, how he was telling his story. And what I found a little endearing about his story was that when he says he had to grow a beard because he was sitting and selling his product, his technology to uh, these companies where there were gen people of, uh, you know, 50, 60 year olds uh, sitting there and thinking, why should I like that to an Indian startup? Uh, why should I buy this technology from him? So, um, yeah, just get back to the uh, presentation. So, as I said, uh, that's our mission. Now, why should we care about your story? Uh, why, I mean, I, we said, and I've said in the beginning that every story matters. Yes, every story matters, but why is it when you are pitching to a media, uh, when uh, you know you are sending out an email, a cold, cold email or a cold call you're making to the media, like uh, why is it that uh, they should hear you? Or why is it that they should, uh, you know, uh, uh, spend time writing your story? Yeah, why? Um, so for us, I can answer why we should write your story is essentially uh, we have always put entrepreneurs first. For us, for us, entrepreneur is the hero, entrepreneur is the king. And uh, the, the fact that you are an entrepreneur means you're solving a problem. Uh, and what is that problem? We would love to know. What is the solution? We would love to know. Uh, we, uh, we try to be an enabler, we try to be a friend and partner to change makers. So entrepreneurs are change makers and, and that's what we believe. Uh, so we are not just storytellers, we also try to do that. And as I showed you our, uh, our, our website on that, and if you click on any of the startup stories, you will find some a tab called connect. 
you know, with the startup. So what happens is this is a new thing that we rolled out. Uh, like it, there is a connect button. And if you go there, connect to this particular startup, uh, you can, you know, reach out directly to that startup, whether it is as an investor, whether it is as somebody who wants a job, uh, wants to work in that particular thing, or whether it is as, uh, you know, just to get in touch with the founder or uh, to know more about their product, et cetera, you can go and connect directly with them. And what we have found uh, since we rolled this out last year is that uh, uh, all these startups that we have featured, very many of them uh, say that people reach out to them. It could be as uh, for you know tech jobs, it could be as uh, to be partners, to know more about the tech uh, from uh, you know entrepreneurs, uh, say students like yourselves who would like to be entrepreneurs. So, so that's how that's what we are enabling also. Uh, of course, uh, once once it's established, you are an entrepreneur. Once it's established, you have a solution for a problem. I would like to, or we would like to know what is it uh, that you're solving? How are you solving? Right? That you need to be very clear upfront when you are wanting to pitch to the uh, to us. Now. The other thing is, see, in 13 years, I mean, we've come a long way, right? And, and when we started out, I joined uh, your story in 2013. Uh, it, things were very different uh, then and things are very different now in 2021. At that time, a uh, lot of startups were coming up. But there were a lot of Me Too startups. There were a lot of startups who would say, okay, this has worked in the Silicon Valley. This has worked in America. This will work here too. So there were a lot of Me Too. And, and, and that, as it happens in any other uh, space, uh, you know, there was this churning, et cetera, is happening. Now, uh, how I would uh, be, you know, uh, short a startup, say, in 2014, is very different from what I would be doing now because the, the, the ecosystem itself has, you know, evolved so much it has matured so much you probably know that in 2021 we've got more than 20 plus unicorns this year right so um, things are, are are changing so uh, I would like to know uh, you know is, is your solution just like any other is, are you calling yourself uber of xyz are you calling swiggy yourself swiggy or xyz those I think days are over so you need to be um, you know, you need to be uh, up to date on how uh, you're telling your story. You need to be up to date on what is happening in, in, in the ecosystem uh, to, uh, before you pitch, uh, you know, your story. What is it that is so unique about it? And even though you are saying you have an edge over others, what is it that is very unique to you? particularly, right, that you need to uh, think about it, you need to, uh, you know, um, write that down and, and discuss it with your co-founders and discuss it maybe with your customers, like what, uh, what is my, uh, that unique proposition, what is that, besides, of course, your solution, etc. But what is it that is there in your story, which is, uh, you know, going to keep make heads turn? Mm. How to tell your story better? So, uh, yeah, first of all, are you ready to tell your story to the world? Because, you know, many times uh, we've had startups pitching to us, probably they've gone through all, all or we've checked up all those boxes that they've got a good, uh, you know, solution. They are, it's a, a very interesting story. Maybe they met, the co-founders met in some, uh, you know, unlikely place and they had to go through various, uh, you know, hurdles and challenges. And then, you know, so, so we like the story. But then uh, there have been cases where you've come up and that startup has come up and told us, look, you know what, I, uh, once they've seen it on print, they say, look, I'm, I'm re really not ready right now uh, to share my story or to tell this. Can you pull it down? Right. So we've had like uh, instances like this. So you need to know whether you're ready for the world uh, to hear your story. So before you pitch, you know, this is what you should uh, check. Uh, then, of course, uh, the the pitching can be mostly it is through emails. Uh, so I, I often say that, uh, you know, to everybody that my our inboxes are like the Sudama, the mythical Sudama spot, which is ever flowing, always flowing. And I'm ashamed to say that there are so many, so many emails and it's just not possible to go through everyone, but we try to do that. Uh, we have, uh, we do pick up stories whenever we can and uh, which comes through cold email, which comes in our editor. If you go to our, how to pitch to your story, you will find that editorial email uh, there where you can write to us and be uh, not only one person, there are, there's a team of editors who look at that. 
So, uh, so if you are if you are uh, pitching on uh, over email, please come straight to the point. Be crisp, be short, and tell us exactly. Uh, you know, uh, you know, instead of going round about like uh, uh, about nobody has the time uh, seriously to do that. Uh, again, uh, you know, as uh, Shakespeare also said that brevity is the soul of wit. So also when you're pitching to the media, keep it short and keep it to the point. Uh, of course, you should, uh, uh, I'm sure you guys do that. And, uh, you know, you should use your social media to uh, talk about because uh, there itself, we, we follow a lot of conversations on social media, whether it is on Twitter, whether it is on LinkedIn, on Facebook, we follow entrepreneurs, we follow founders, we follow uh, speakers, etc. Uh, and, and nowadays, you know that like people announce their uh, offerings, people announce their funding, people announce various new initiatives that they are doing on on their Twitter handles, um, whether it is uh, the Grofers that was in the news recently where they talked about the 10 minute delivery or whether it was Zomato when they were going for an IPO, all of all the founders, they are there out there, the media are there on social media. So I, I uh, would encourage that you should be there and tell your story as, as it is evolving. And I'm sure it catches the uh, you know eye of uh, journalists. Uh, the other thing is like when you're telling your story, what is important is uh, always to show it, uh, whether it is through your products, whether it is through your services, it is maybe a short video or something. Uh, instead of rambling and going on and, and you know talking about it right like uh, that works the best like uh, when you show uh, your uh, you know show your story for, for that matter. Uh, the other point that I think uh, I mentioned when uh, we were uh, about this talk was that we we'll, uh, I tried to show you the other side of uh, how it is uh, to be on in my side, so to speak, when we receive pitches and we receive, as I said, this inbox which keeps overflowing, etc. I've got I, I I will show and not tell. So just bear with me one second. Can you see? Yeah. So I just wanted to show you this, that this is what happens. And most of the time we are making kind of those faces with a lot of eyes rolling, et cetera. And then it's a, it's a cycle, it, it continues. And uh, so please be kind. And uh, when you're pitching, uh, follow these rules and you will definitely get uh, the years of the media and uh, you will definitely uh, get your story told. Because as I said, we, we are daily publishing so many stories and till date we've published 120,000 stories. So yes, uh, uh, that's that's about it from me, but a uh, lot of questions have come in. I think Suparna, uh, you had shared some questions. So maybe we can, uh, we can take questions and uh, uh, from whatever, if I have not covered it in my presentation. I can yes, see uh, my old you. colleague Ramananda here. Hi Ram. <laughs> Yeah, so I, uh, you were saying something? Yeah, hi. So uh, I think thanks for that uh, very informative session. I think uh, questions, uh, Ms. Sriparna Sauvarnika, you want to get started or should I put the ball rolling question to start off with? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yeah. So, um, Ms. Deepi, so uh, I think the session was very informative. 
and we cover a lot of points that we generally look for whenever you know from a pr perspective that we pitch stories right so if you would want us to say straight away check off okay there's a basic checklist right if your story meets these criteria do not meet this criteria don't even bother if you can see that for example some reporters say have the startup rise funds do they have a product out in the market like some of the basic operational issues questions also comes up whenever we pitch stories right so like that i'm not looking for an exact point that you use but broad term broad markers when you are assessing a startup for a potential story what would you look for or what would your story look for thank you so, uh, so you know uh, sai like a uh, good question and uh, one thing that we are asked often and of course when i uh, some questions were shared with me is uh, i do you cover only startups i mean there is this whole thing that oh your story covers or startup stories only of those startups that are funded which is not true let me just put it out there uh, to everyone it's not true at all i mean detect story that you saw that we did uh, they weren't uh, funded at that time okay they were in an incubation cent uh, incubation uh, accelor and they were going there through that so okay. definitely no no i mean uh, the if you are bootstrap we consider bootstrap heroes i mean uh, that you guys are heroes so uh, uh, if, so you that's not a criteria at all uh, right the thing is that you may see the news that you pro probably see are the news that comes at okay the funding news which we call so that is a part of what we do is it's, it's a part of um, it's an update as i said that even detect technologies in in june this year they got uh, funding so it we are putting it out there as a news because we have done their story because they are part of the startup so it's you should consider that as news in the in the whole startup ecosystem that's just a part of it that just if you have raised your funding that's not a startup story if you go to our website you will see uh, there is this uh, uh, below the main page uh, startups right so some of them are funded some of them are not funded uh, so that's definitely not a criteria the other criteria also which we are told a lot which we are pulled up for is oh you guys publish stories only of iit founders uh, now i am i'm sure most of you guys are here iit uh, that's also not true uh, because definitely yes uh, we do because there are iit founders we right about them but there are so many non iit founders uh, i myself am very very uh, you know uh, uh, i favor the founders who come from small towns and are actually working in small towns trying to solve problems in small towns right so definitely not um so the criteria that you should look for is to straight away say that look as i said in my presentation also look this is the the, the solution that we are offering of for this problem and this is the tech we use if it's a tech heavy company if it's a, a like you know product you have see this is the technology that we have this is the technology that we are using to solve this problem and uh, we are so in how many years uh, uh, in, into it so now suppose if you have started something say a beginning of this year uh but you have a very good uh, you know a uh, solution a product uh, however if you do not have customers and you just want your story out there because you want to actually show that story to your potential investors i think that's a uh, cheating right on your part in the sense that uh, it, did you find a mar product market fit uh, have you found it may not be a paying customer but at least somebody who's using your product so these are the the few things uh, it was there in the presentation that that you should have and you should look for before you are presenting it to uh, you know before you are pitching it to the Uh, the media great thank you thank you and uh, on the same note iit mic is very unique in that it is open to everyone just 70% of the overall startups incubated by iit mic are directly related to uh, the iit madras system whereas 30% are if i can use the term rank outsiders somebody has a good proposal they propose to the board the board likes it they get the funding no different than any other startup just a side note but thank you thank you we will definitely factor in these points going forward uh, mr sriparna sobarnika thank you next question is uh, from mr raghavendra meras uh, how to promote and brand our organization in e prints in e prints right uh, i am assuming that uh, you probably have a website right 
you probably uh, they must be probably having a website and they must be uh, so what happens is lot of uh, 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 startups they have their own blogs they have their own um, you know uh, and as i said use social media so you can write about your uh, this medium if you do not have your own blog you can use medium you can use my story which is part of our uh, thing it's a user generated platform you can write uh, about your um, updates you know stuff that you're doing stuff that you're thinking it could be uh, about failure that you know probably you made some product and you failed you should uh, document that and and have it up there for people who matter to read and give you advice so uh, you know uh, these are these are the things that uh, are low hanging fruits these are the things that you can do on your own and you can you know share it over linkedin share it over twitter um, and get get feedback yeah Thank you. Uh, next question is from Mr. Shaburis from Medisim VR. Uh, would like to know what mediums to approach for tech coverage. Um, hi, I'm Nina. I represent Medisim VR as well. So the question was: um, Is there any particular journal or you know a particular portal that we are to follow in terms of keeping up with technology and also updating our tech? Uh, so there are uh, various uh, very tech specific of course we write about tech uh, technology we have a lot of guest authors uh, you know uh, people given we say guest authors these are people experts in their opinion it could be the tech founders themselves uh, investors themselves who write uh, again as i said if you go to our uh, website there is a section called uh, expert opinion you know, you can follow that uh, because these are people who are doing this work and, you know, they know what they are saying. So they do write, uh, they give uh, a little bit of uh, uh, share their experiences. Uh, plus, there are a whole lot of other <laughs> media, <laughs> media that cover yeah, the uh, tech crunch. Uh, as, as, excuse me. Okay. As I said, there is there are uh, various ma the mainstream media that is also covering uh, uh, technology startups. So uh, I would say follow uh, tweet on Twitter. You should follow uh, some various uh, uh, the founders themselves because they they do they blog about their products. They write uh, and. Um, uh, yeah, there are so many out there. I don't know how many to, but if you want, I can maybe make a list and share it with uh, some people. Yes, that would be appreciated because um, as of now, we are pretty active on Twitter, but getting technology, especially medical technology out there is a little difficult because the uh, audience is not as receptive as we want them to be, especially in the Indian market. So, which is why we are finding it a little difficult because our product is primarily services, but it's also technology. So so it's sort of like intertwined with each other. So in terms of social media and um, like you mentioned, other platforms, social media blogs and other, uh, you know, putting out our uh, story on my story as well as medium, like you had mentioned, um, will we get the traction we require is one question that we constantly ask ourselves. And also in, with technology evolving, Will it reach the right audience? That is, that's why I, I think um, primarily why Sabish put that question forward. May I ask what you what is it that you guys do? Uh, so we are a medical technology company. Uh, we create a training procedures in virtual reality and for, for, for students and healthcare professionals, so primarily nurses and students. So what they do is they practice primary skills using our VR products. So who is your uh, target audience? I mean, are you our target that? audience are primarily medical institutions and nursing institutions. So basically, um, our aim is to avoid risk when, you know, students go forward to practice medicine because there's a lot of risk involved when they directly practice on patients. So we are trying to reduce that risk. So that is primarily what our product promotes as well. So, you know, there is this uh, on Twitter, there's this whole thing, Med Twitter. Uh, and after this uh, COVID, I've started following a lot of doctors and okay. uh, some, some like really young, uh, you know, the, the ones who are studying and the ones who just started in journey, they directly go to COVID wards mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, jump into the middle of the food, so to speak. Uh, you know, if you follow Med Twitter, a lot of lots of uh, tech savvy uh, doctors are there. Mm, and uh, yeah, you should follow them and try and. 
Uh, there are some uh, there are some uh, handles I can share. Uh, let me see. Uh, many of them are there. Yeah. So my email ID is putting it out there. Uh, it's dp at yourstory dot com. So please do. Okay. Uh, my my name is Vandan. Okay. Uh, we have just uh, set up a caravan manufacturing company. Okay, we are trying to uh, bring in international quality uh, caravans uh, in India. Unfortunately, India uh, the caravan is uh, highly misunderstood as just a tempo traveler, which is being converted into a uh, you know a livable space. But uh, caravan definitely goes beyond a tempo traveler, and tempo traveler is not everybody's cup of tea uh, to uh, you know drive a kind of tempo traveler around okay. and uh, yeah. right. So, so I get your point. We, so you are manufacturing these uh, things. You know what? It's it's. We are going to manufacture and bring in the first India's first self-drivable caravan in India. That is, uh, in a small uh, pickup vehicle. Yeah. And have you sold any? Ma'am, we are in the prototype uh, stage. Hmm. Okay. You you know uh, share your share an uh, email with me um, and and let's see what we can do. Uh, so considering you know you are in the prototype stage and you've been working on it, you uh, probably have a lot of ideas. And as I said, we have an expert opinion column. Maybe you should write about it. What sort of policies are required and and what where 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 is the lacuna? Where is the lack of policy? Where is their gray area? And uh, uh, you should start a conversation on that. Uh, most happy to ma'am and i can also probably get uh, other experts those a few who are there in pan india we could yeah. also get in those uh, inputs also and uh, be happy to share it for you yeah, yeah. do write to me yeah. deeply at your story thank you thank you thank you thank you vandan thank you ma'am uh, next question is from dr stuart gracian uh, from socio and private limited what should be uh, highlighted in the story of a startup social impact investment raised founders journey novelty of technology or uh, like what should be highlighted and what does the indian audience care about the most yeah uh, you know uh, the stories that we write uh, are also inspirational like people come to read our stories because it inspires them um, you know to take action because it inspires them because uh, the entrepreneurs that we write about who are making a difference are like you and me uh, it's not somebody with horns or with uh, you know halo around their head and uh, in special circumstances they are all all like us uh, who have uh, you know uh, you know gone through various challenges and and come up with uh, their uh, dream to you know start uh, to solve problems so definitely if the founder has an interesting story uh, you know about the uh, how they uh, they experienced these challenges and how they came definitely you should put that out if it's very unique you should have that story um uh, definitely about the product see at the end of the day uh, yes you may have a very good story interesting story but what are you doing uh, is that is what matters what are the, what is the problem that you are solving so the these two are are very very important to uh, show uh, if you have a, a very unique story you should definitely write about that and uh, the problem that you are solving these are the two most most important things the rest can be like when you are uh, you know you can uh, put it in a point format uh, because you feel that you should mention that uh, as i said be short be crisp but try to put across uh, your point i mean and and as jaya was mentioning about this workshop so what we do is uh, when when we hold workshops for startups it is about how do you tell your story better how do you tell your story uh, because today attention span is so less like there's so much content out there there's so much to read out there there's so many uh, stuff i mean like because of my phone i'm distracted constantly uh, i i as in like when i'm talking about i said everybody all of us right we have work we have like constantly we have been bombarded with uh, stuff so how do you get the attention uh, from this all this clutter how do you you know uh, make yourself stand out uh, is uh, you have to work at it you have to work at your story you have to work uh, uh, you know figuring out trying to uh, bring in the aspect what is so unique about uh, uh, you know your story and and also uh, be be in tune be uh, clued to what's happening around you so uh, yeah uh, just a moment i just want yeah. to share one question sent in by bhavani here so uh, she's asking will an established ad tech company not really a startup entering india now make news for your story or is it all just about startups you know Uh, a new edtech startup 
yeah no actually a well established ed tech startup which is not really a, on a, an ed tech company it's not really a startup now so it's well established but it's entering india now so will that kind of thing make a story make it to your story oh yeah why not i mean if they are coming to india with a different uh, uh, kind of disrupting uh, the existing stuff how it's going on and uh, they have some very unique proposition why not like uh, uh, i mean there's no harm in pitching to the media is my is my thing like right like uh, I never think that okay uh, you know i have the story i don't know just just no harm just go out there and pitch your story uh, that you should always provided you are ready for it Uh, there is some question here i can see in the chat how your yeah. story will profile yeah. a startup with a great idea but with no established success yet to show on ground but are working towards it um so so a great idea you know they we have dime the ideas are there like a dime a dozen ideas are there all of us feel we have great ideas it's the ex- execution of that idea that matters i think at the end of the day because uh, unless you have executed on that idea uh, unless you have like been on the ground found found the footpath path so to speak uh, uh, the idea is an idea so uh, so work on that idea and uh, once you have some traction once you uh, you know you have some believers in you from the ecosystem etc please do pitch your story uh you know suppose there is a me too product you mentioned me too in your presentation so suppose there is a me too product but it has some you know very serious differentiator or an add on would they be sort of eligible to yeah, pitch yeah. or would they be just pitched as add ons no 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 so definitely because there are a lot of me too so it, the, the whole point is there will be a lot of and and it's natural right like you know if you go to a market there's not just one cloth shop there are many fabric shops there are many uh, garment shops there are so similarly uh, there will not be just one uh, you know there is zomato and there is swiggy so and and then there are so many others which are operating say maybe in smaller towns in the northeast wherever so yes there will be a lot of me too's but my point when i was making the me too was uh, uh, because most often uh, you know that's that's an easy way uh, like you know to get your story published and say that we are the uber of this and we are but definitely definitely uh, we do look so for instance ed tech companies there are so many of them and we have profiled all of them just because there is a byju or a, or an upgrad or something it doesn't mean that we will not uh, you know uh, look at a Uh, publishing others or or telling their stories so definitely uh, yes they can pitch uh, i just like to follow up a little on that is is there a me too that comes even close to your story uh so right now all the main the mainstream media everybody is uh, it, it has got gone or got into the whole thing of startups right everybody is publishing they have dedicated teams now uh startup teams earlier it it was like you know i remember the days when navavish uh, agarwal of ola he uh, came to our one of our tech sparks so a tech spark event is one of our annual events where we showcase uh, the tech Uh, the emerging tech companies which which you call the tech 30 and incidentally the you can apply to be at a tech 30 company uh, the forms etc are available so uh, do follow do subscribe to our newsletter and you'll get that uh, so he he was one of that i mean he was there and uh, he he had, he had this whole idea of disrupting the taxi space and there you know so uh, so what i'm trying to say is that like uh, i lost my train of thought uh, uh, <laughs> that uh, the the mainstream media perhaps uh, i mean nobody wrote about them right at that time it's only when they started uh, showing when they became uh, the the uh, the competition to uber and when uber came and all of that they were they were there in the news similar with zomato when they zomato was started it was just a menu on your phone right like it's how they evolved and so we to, we've been telling that of a similar for flipkart right uh, when the bansal started flipkart from there to bedroom for mangla flat it, it uh, we were the ones who wrote uh, and and all these uh, young founders would come to the your story office and uh, you know speak to shraddha and uh, uh, we would write their stories so uh, what i'm trying to say is that is there a me to to your story now there are definitely there are many many uh, you know uh, digital uh, Uh, websites etc who do write about startups who do write about inspirational people who write about uh, pe- organizations doing inspirational things 
but uh, I would say we are the pioneers <laughs> in, in as far as uh, the startup uh, is concerned. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Ramananda, sir. Our uh, next question is from Rishabh, Sina Mobility. Uh, so they are asking if they want to approach your story, what will be the process, like how they can approach you? So if you go to a website, there is a, a how to get in touch. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, the email ID is there, uh, editorial at yourstory.com. Uh, I'll just tell you, hang on. Yeah, so otherwise you can also write to me. Uh, hi, this is Rishabh from Sina Mobility. Uh, Shriparna, just a minute, if I can get a chance. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so in fact, that was my question. On top of that, I think I missed that point. Uh, like, is it a good idea to hire a PR firm and then approach maybe VC Circle, VCC Edge, or your story, those kind of stuff? Uh, what you're saying is, uh, should you hire a PR firm? Huh? For have... uh, this kind of activity? Well, if you have a budget, why not? <laughs> Uh, so see, okay. uh, see the thing with uh, what, how life will be easier for you if you have uh, if you hire a PR firm would be they would do a lot of uh, stuff for you. They will know which media uh, to target. They will have a list of people, uh, you know, that can. Uh, I mean, they would have had done their homework and they are professionals and they would know. Okay, if I pitch to Dipti, she is partial towards small town startups who are, you know. <laughs> so let me pitch her the story. Okay, if I have to pitch a SaaS company, let me. Pitch to this XYZ. If I have a deep tech company, let me pitch to an XYZ. So, you know, they would probably uh, know something about that already. They would know different media people in different organizations. It's a fintech startup. They'll know, okay, this person covers fintech in Mint or this person covers fintech in ET. This person covers in your story. So, you know, it's easy for, for you as a company. You don't have to rack your brains about uh, who to uh, approach. If you have the budget, certainly. Sure. Uh, thank you, Deepthi. So any recommendation from your side that you think that uh, these firms might be better? Oh, PR agencies. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, okay. No, sure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Deepthi. It was very, very much insightful. Thank you. Yeah, Shipra, you're on mute. Yeah, Yash from C3 Matrix. He also wants to ask something like Yash. Uh, hello, hi, Yash here from uh, C3. Uh, right. So I just uh, wanted to ask you that we are in the uh, B2B space. We are a med tech company and we make uh, smartphone based yeah. ophthalmic devices. So our customers are purely eye doctors and hospitals. Mm -hmm. So how uh, would you think that, uh, you know, your story can help us, you know, just to get the word out, not from a, you know, marketing or sales point of view, but at least to uh, get some kind of, uh, you know, foot in uh, the investor world or, you know, some of those things, because I'm pretty sure that the doctors are not going to open up your story and read about us, but, uh, you know, just to uh, get out there, though we are not in the B2C space, but how to spin it on this kind of a large medium to get some kind of attention. Uh, how old is your organization? When did you start? So we are about uh, two, two years old and we've got really good initial traction. So like in the ophthalmology world, people have started knowing us, mm -hmm. but uh, now we want to, you know, maybe go for a round of funding uh, as well. So mainly from that. Why don't you uh, why don't you apply for Tech Thirty? Uh, just have a look at the criteria there and uh, uh, apply for the Tech Thirty uh, because what we do with our Tech Thirty companies is that they get uh, so Tech Sparks is happening in October and they get uh, 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 direct access to investors. They get one on one with they get to pitch their uh, startup to investors. So uh, that's one way you can uh, you know you can apply for uh, the Tech Thirty and uh, see how that goes. Sure. Thank you. The last question we want to take, that is uh, from Akhil Vidya. Uh, Akhil, if you can unmute yourself. Uh, hi, thank you very much. Hi, Ms. Nair. This is Akhil Vidya from Footprint Global Communications. I am a colleague of Mr. Sairam. 
And uh, I have a very quick question for you. Uh, apart from startups, how uh, will your story profile and incubation center, uh, which is within an IIT, like I, uh, IIT Madras has an incubation center, IIT Mandi also has an incubation center like IIT Mandi Catalyst. So how it can be uh, uh, profiled and how uh, we uh, within the Institute should pitch it uh, to your story? Yeah. So, you know, the thing is that with incubating uh, incubator centers, etc., what we do is uh, we profile their startups, the startups that are incubating there, right? Uh, uh, by telling the stories of their startups, we are indirectly telling their story. So uh, you can, you know, share a list of startups that you have under uh, that and like whether it is IIT Madras or IIT Guwahati or Mandi, I think that you mentioned, you can share that these are the startups and then when we profile them. So, you know, various ways that we do that, it, it could be like a listicle that we are putting out. So we say these are the startups and then give a brief about each startup and say they have been incubated by so-and-so. Uh, uh, alternatively, we profile each and um, you know all these startups separately. And then uh, in the story, we will mention that they were incubated and so-and-so. So, -and -so. so uh, I would assume that uh, your story would be told through them, through their story. All right. OK, thank you very much. Uh, so hi, um, hi Deepthi. So I think we're well past five now. So at this point, I think we can, uh, you know, sum up all our questions and yeah. I open the floor back to Sairam. So I think he can ask his question. He's been having his <laughs> hands raised for a very, very long time. So so we will connect kind of with Deepthi yeah. offline. It's already past yeah. five, so I don't want to... Uh... No, I think he can ask his question and then also call it a wrap and sum up the session for us. So a lot of the stories that we have been looking at, or at least the perception is that there is a more tech heavy component to the stories that we are covering, right? Is that something that is uh, a criteria or is it something like uh, inherent, uh, you know, a slant to, or what, however you want to put it, uh, a favor towards tech companies? Is it something like, is, is tech something that we look uh, very closely on? Is it a criteria? That is something that I wanted to check with you, um, Ms. Deepi. Well, no, so is you're asking whether is tech a criteria to co be covered? Or in your is it at least something that's looked at more, uh, more often than not? Definitely. How does that play? How does that play when you ask a story, right? I'm sure you have a list of five points that you would assess weightage on, right? So how much weightage would you say does tech, being a tech company, you know, increase the chances and so on and so forth? I'm just trying to get an understanding yeah. because we do. Uh, I don't know whether it is a conscious. Uh, move or not, there's a lot of tech startups that have been profiled by your story, right? Even starting with DTEC, a lot of the, I think it's a bias because IITs come from a tech background and I come from a tech background. So that is not something that I will hold against, that in fact plays to my strengths or my team's strengths. But I'm just trying to gain awareness because there's a lot of startups out there that are not tech heavy also. A lot of established companies, for example, one company that we know, they are trying to break into a new segment in healthy foods. Right now, it is just organic and healthy is being equated. And they are trying to do something called non-pesticide, right? Which is more favorable towards small and marginal farmers because organic is very capital intensive or not scalable or certain issues are there. So, which are not, of course, involving tech. So, I'm just trying to gain an understanding of how much weightage does being a tech company goes towards, you know, uh, potential for a story. So I hope I'm making sense, I hope. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just give you a context here. So, you know, definitely what is a startup? Like, how do you, how do we distinguish a startup and a regular company? The startup, we will say, I mean, it's, it's a, how they, they can scale uh, and, and, you know, how they can do more with little. Okay, that, that's generally what a startup does, right? As compared to a, a traditional manufacturing or whatever company or business that has been there, right? Uh, so that's the aspect that we look for because these are disrupting. These are the disruptive things. So it could be like whether, uh, you know, why is Ola, which is again, it could be a taxi service like any other. Why is that taxi service and not the same as Ola? Because Ola is using that tech to disrupt that space. It's making it easier for the consumer, right? So you talked about do we uh, only heavily, I, I showed the detect uh, thing was because essentially it was an IIT Madras uh, thing. So I showed that. 
you know, off late, there are so many D2C companies. So what is a D2C? It's like direct consumer companies that have come up, right? It's it's a growing uh, thing, right? Uh, it's, it's something that uh, people are looking at. So we've covered companies like Mama Earth, which is like, you know, huge on that. What do they do? They make products, right? Skincare products, healthcare products. Then uh, we have uh, covered companies uh, which are, which make beer, right? Like there will, there are a whole lot of companies that are doing that. There are, these are all new age brands, right? So they are getting, but, but the fact is, why are they different from a regular manufacturing, say a Lakme? Uh, why is Mama Earth different from a Lakme? made to uh, you know is that because they have brought in a technology which is direct to the consumer where I just go to their website or I go to Amazon where they are present as well on marketplaces I put the order and it comes to me uh, I pay uh, this thing online and it comes to me right so that that's how they have uh, used technology to disrupt the space but their products uh, and then their products are again very consumer specific very personalized a lack may maybe now it's looking at personalized stuff but like you know they will have a standard cream a standard uh, makeup kit or whatever but mama earth has something for the oily skin something for the dry skin something so it's a very very personalized thing so that's a new uh, uh, crop of startups that are coming up whether it is in terms of food organic food as you mentioned so recently you know uh, again, these are traditional companies uh, that I did their story. The third generation of these traditional companies, they are they are starting something called the D2C companies. For instance, the, uh, you must have heard of Banswara Syntex. It's it's one of large textile. They have textile manufacturing units here. They make yarns, they make textile, they export and they work with big brands like Uniqlo, like Hugo Boss, like, you know, uh, all these bigger brands. But um, the new generation, what they are trying to bring in this whole cool as Aspect of startups, the whole uh, young culture uh, of doing things, right? And they have started something called the Pan Project, which is um, an e-tailer, which is on, you go to their website. And uh, uh, so if you go to Mintra, for example, you will find a small size, an extra small size, a large, a mid medium size, right? Those are the options that are available. But for them, for them, they are saying that we are giving you a very customized fit uh, of pants, which means that it was it would be as if you're going to a tailor and getting those uh, things stitched. And and all you have to do is go on their website, do all their measure, give all your measurements, etc. Place the order, make the payment, and it comes to you after a, a whatever period of time, four days, seven days, that it takes. So he is disrupting that kind of space here. So uh, again, it is uh, what do you call them now? Uh, he is uh, relying on his. Uh, legacy business which is a textile business because that those are the textiles it's going to use but he's trying to make this a new thing right so we so we cover that so these are the things that we cover now it could be a masala company right to somebody who's doing uh, the pickles and masalas and uh, ready to eat uh, products but again if it's a more personalized thing and it's uh, offering it through direct to consumer whether it's through marketplaces uh, they are sort of using technology Right. And then not only using technology in the consumer facing, but they're also using technology in terms of, you know, uh, logistics, in terms of warehousing, in terms of, uh, you know, delivery. So there are so many startups that are in, in the delivery space, etc. So, uh, so they all have that tech element. And uh, so to answer to your question, is it only uh, tech heavy? So all companies have taken them. All, all the new age startups will have tech. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I think we can just sum it up. Um, for any other questions, we can just always connect offline. We will always share questions with people uh, without a problem. So to, if you can broadly just sum up, when startups look, when Ms. Deepthi, please correct me if I get anything wrong. When we approach the media for stories from a startup's perspective, the key points that you would look for are products are disruptive, are they novel, are they unique? They are not, they can't be an Indian version of a foreign product, if I can put it that like that way. Something that's more um, customer centric or more people centric, right? Um, that is something that I would say, or at least my takeaway. Uniqueness and novel, I think that is something that constantly came up through our discussion, right? How unique or novel or offbeat or uh, the product that the startup is working on. I think that is something that I would uh, emphasize as a key takeaway from this session. Anything else you would like to sum up, Ms. Deepi? 
so uh, again uh, bringing the point of the me to thing so it uh, i mean you could be doing the same at tech or a med tech company like others but essentially uh, you know you should have it up front what is the problem that you are solving uh, that should be uh, that should yeah. be the way to pitch to the me and crisp emails i think goes a long way yeah coming straight to the point <laughs> yeah yeah so um that was a very very informative session we have tons of uh, takeaways from this and uh, we are deeply appreciative of your time and we also look forward to the workshop and i'm sure our uh, startups in the iit msc learned a lot from this session and uh, so genuine pleasure to have have you on the session so thank you thank, thank you, you once again from all of us at iit msc and iitm so yeah have a great weekend you too thank hopefully you hopefully with no calls or email <laughs> everyone thank you ram bye yeah thank you